we have things be um here now we are now we are live it's it's i mean the, these these beginnings are always uh loose you know we keep sure. it loose cool. um, for the actual podcast version uh I, I like trim the beginning off and stuff cool but I, I don't really edit though like i don't go through and like take out take out parts you know i just yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave, it, leave it whole but i'll, I'll trim trim cool. the beginning but uh very cool yeah man and people you know people trickle in cool mm. here let me get my get my water all set up and stuff cool i am this uh my fucking uh room here is just mm. like completely filled with like lps and stuff like you can't see but it's like i'm i'm mailing you know i like to i self-release this new record so it's just like it's so great you're doing the vi- you got the vinyl of this thing too it's awesome it's feeling and looking good but it's like yeah. I, I i'm like i'm like oh right this is what i show this is <laughs> this is now i'm like just like packing it up you know I, that's funny i may uh i may hire someone it may be time maybe i get to it get help you know i get it um let me see here let me oh what's your by the way what's your you have a time limit you have you have to get out of here i mean maybe in like an hour um, okay good okay yeah, so we'll move yeah. it we'll keep we'll keep it moving yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. good 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 yeah um, i gotta run out and long story short <laughs> yeah yeah people don't need to, don't need to hear by <laughs> what i'm doing but yeah i got some i gotta run i gotta run out to, into town for a second yeah composers doing normal shit the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, that 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 uh, twitter account or whatever exactly yeah yeah um, yeah man mm. well good so well, yeah we can get we can get started man okay. i mean the most you know okay well so you know Ty Braxton, okay, people watching, I mean, presumably listening, right? We're not going to get into, like, a how'd you get started in music kind of thing. We're basically here to talk about cool. about Ty's new record that is just so, so crushing. Um, I already I already gave you the, you know, the gushing, uh, the gushing email. Yeah, uh, well, on, on thank this. you for listening to it, Charlie. Hell, yeah, man, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, background, though, I mean, I have known Ty since some... Um, dude since we were like 20 right i mean is that yeah i mean it's been like 25 years something like that (laughs) i think so man because i yeah i met you i mean i definitely met you through middletown Mm -hmm. middletown connecticut people yeah you Um, were you were going to school at wesleyan at the time and um you know my family lived there and and uh i was i think at the time was going to heart school of music um but i would come back all the time and the heart school and wesleyan connection there'd be like a lot of shows between the schools and stuff I, to be honest i was probably playing down at wesleyan more than i was playing at heart probably yeah, yeah. my um more my my wheelhouse but um yeah and i met you there i've, I've played like i can't even remember all the stuff that we did but i remember like doing stuff at like the eclectic house I think. yeah 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 and, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. the thing is though i i think you were actually already graduated at that point because oh. i remember that i remember the main thing like my impression was that like I, I remember you being in new york and you were like oh, okay. just and you were like just starting to get plugged into the kind of the scene there yeah. and you know you introduced me to some folks like i remember i would come in and you were already living right off that, that oh okay Is in that, that place place? yeah like the bedford that that place right off bedford yeah yeah where, where like I think you were like, I think it was like in Joel's like closet or something. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like tiny like bedroom that someone already built out like a kind of bunk loft space. And um, yeah, man, paying like $500 uh, to live in some place on Bedford North 7th right now, which is like, could you imagine? It's just I know. in that. No, it's, yeah, it's just, right? it's like oil sheiks there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, that's the hang. That's the, you know, um, but then, and then we had the, um, dude, I almost forgot about, you know, you, me, and, and uh, Mike Pride, Antenna oh, Terra, yeah. dude. I mean, that was like, we only played probably like five shows, but. Uh, I remember you would like, good. we had like, we had this trio, but, but you would come over. I remember you came over once and we were playing in that closet that was my room. And I remember we were just, we were recording into my four track or something. And I remember like us playing and looking at each other like. Cool. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean we just it, we were, we were kind of connected in a way that was really cool um yeah we did a couple of shows that was a special thing man like i know we yeah. never really we didn't like um 
uh, like record uh, in any official uh, project or something, but it was a it was a fun project at the time. Yeah, yeah, because I kind of I kind of got settled in with doing like Z's as the main thing, mm-hmm. and then your solo stuff. Yeah. Um, because this is the thing, man. I mean, I'm interested in like I I've been listening to your new record, uh, yeah. Telekinesis, and I've I've been like thinking about it in the context of your entire mm. body of work. Like I I was like comparing it. I was like, man, I hadn't even thought about your early solo stuff from the mm-hmm. early yeah, 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 yeah. 2000s. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just sick to see just how different things can be, but it's like still your voice. And it's like, yeah. there's kind of nothing that you've done that's been like left field, like, whoa, is that tie? Like, it's mm-hmm. been like ever since the beginning, like very <laughs> much your thing, like clearly a voice, you know? Nice of you to say. I, it's hard to, it's hard to feel like that a little bit for myself in the sense that um, I feel like I'm always. I feel like I've been casting like these wide nets, and I don't necessarily know how these things go together. You know what I mean? Like when you're doing it, it do, it doesn't seem. Um, but on one hand, it seems logical because you you're working in a certain way, and you say, oh, you know, I'd love to like incorporate a larger idea, or I'd like to examine this idea from this angle but you end up like at least with you know those early solo pieces were me with a handful of guitar effects pedals and a series of looping devices where the goal was to kind of create a tapestry of sound that was larger than one person that reflected something that i had learned playing with people where you have like some kind of social aspect embedded like synthetically into how you're interacting with yourself in the loop. So you're kind of like looking to like create this um, like uh, fake social event happening with all these layerings, right? Like a, like a, like a band or an ensemble, but, but without all the drama, without all, you know, different people's personalities and, you know, and also being able to do it in a way where you really start to create a body of work and like synthesis or are able to synthesize, your own voice in a very literal way. It's just you doing it. Um, and then the, the, you know, after I'd done that for a bunch of years and, um, you know, then still being in bands and stuff, you know, being a part of battles and stuff, but even aside from battles, like, um, the idea of like growing that idea from this hyper personalized, um, you know, intensely insular way of working to then take that model, and apply that kind of like insular uh, facsimile social thing to like larger and larger groups, mm, and it, mm. which is kind of a weirder, which is a weird way to think about the group. It's just like, um, I, I mean, maybe it's not a weird way, but that at least that's how I kind of came to it. So it's to start growing the idea of like, of uh, having actual interaction, but still yeah. have my voice be coming through each person uh in this larger group That's so it makes, yeah you know what i mean so it makes sense like from that way but i could just say culturally speaking going from you know messed up uh deconstructed sounding electronic music to then going into like large-scale orchestra works and stuff and to like have some kind of a through line I was, re- I'm really interested in the voices. I'm really interested in the sound of the orchestra, just like I'm interested in the sound of the electronics, but culture is something that is, t- was, I hadn't considered at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to kind yeah. Of, yeah. To kind of be interfacing with these kind of different cultures and realizing how different they are. That's the kind of that, that end has ended up being like a thing of like, Oh wow. Okay. That's a weird like where, yeah. where am did, I? In these did, did, didn't we? I I feel like though didn't we always kind of have this sense of implicitly like later on you know right. we're gonna do adult stuff. I mean right. right. It, it was always it seemed like that was always like the goal. Like I feel like none of us at that time like none of us were like playing those basement shows and being like yeah. this is enough. This is yeah, all yeah, yeah, I need. Right. Like it was it was always like bro like <laughs> this is just there we're gonna have the children's choir like you know just you know it's funny though ambitions it's like, like I feel like I was always ambitious. I feel like the idea of like doing big projects or something was exciting to me, but I didn't necessarily know where like there was no end goal of like Oh, in a couple of years from now, I'm going to be writing for orchestra or something like that. There that wasn't, wasn't okay. Yeah, there wasn't really. Ex- I'm trying to think back. Not, not so much. I mean, I, I started, 
I started reapproaching the idea. I mean, I went to school for music composition, but while I was there, I was just doing electronic music. I wasn't writing for orchestra. I did write some stuff for ensemble, but it was still through the lens mostly of electronic music. Mm. Um, and then, you know, when I was when I was a part of battles and I was doing like arranging and writing pieces of I, that's when I started to really get more interested in orchestral writing, ironically. And then I started to see that as a possibility to be able to like as like a vehicle to still be able to house certain ideas of my voice and, and things that I was excited about. I saw I, I suddenly started to realize that it could occur in in, in ensembles and orchestras. Um, and that wasn't totally obvious to me in the early aughts. Okay. I, was kind of, I was kind of more into like the band zone. I was more into like the solo electronic thing, Th projects that seemed more um, manageable and just in, just doable. Um, and you know what it takes to like, what it has taken to do telekinesis. It's a really intense project and it was a really intense uh, um, way of going about producing something oh, like yeah that. it's logistically I, insane it's i mean like, it's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah logistically it's just like and like i i don't think i would have been able to wrap my head around what it would mean to do a project like that in like yeah yeah in, yeah so i mean I, li li literally I, just the amount of money i mean yeah, it's like just yeah. on some like not even that complicated you know that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> someone someone's footing the bill for this this is not like you know for um, sure and you yeah, know I mean, yeah and that's another thing too which is like yeah, raising the money and coming 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 into situations where um, you are able to somehow uh, pool uh, you know situations together to have something like this realized. Like, yeah, I did not just like, yeah, just to be clear, like this was not something where I was like, oh, let me just pull it out of my bank account and do this thing. Like, <laughs> right. no way. Well, well no, of course not. Yeah, You'd never have been able to do that. So it was a lesson in that too, just kind of navigating what it means to do like a really large project, something that I conceived of over, you know, uh, I, I had the first idea to do it, something like this, like maybe 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then slowly like, you know, getting more comfortable with the idea of, doing the project in the way that I wanted to do it and having the ability to do it in the way that I wanted to do it. And then just the logistics and the logistics are just years and years. That's, that's uh, of like, course, you know? of course I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. So, so like, so it's with the Metropolis ensemble who I, I had heard yeah. of, but this is my first time hearing them. Obviously they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was, was there like a concept, like, were you given a concept for this commission? Were, were, were they like, uh, were, were they like, we want you to do something like X, Y, Z, or was it just like, we can do a huge orchestra thing? Also the choir. I mean, like yeah. the youth, the youth choir, was that your idea or was that like part of their, like, so, so this, I mean, as a piece, I'll say, I started like taking notes of like what I wanted to do in like maybe 2013 or something. And the reason it's taken, it took so long as a piece was I knew I really wanted to um, use electronics in the way that um, I had been kind of working in my solo world. It's, another thing I'll just say as a footnote, it's just kind of funny. Like, you know, I started in my 14 and 16 years old with these like loop pedals and stuff. And then I like started to like, uh, you know, then I uh, uh, co-founded Battles and then Battles did its thing. And then like I started writing ensemble music and, da, da, da. and then ironically, I ended up kind of going back to the music and the way of thinking about music that I did when I was 14, 15, 16, you know, it's like, it's modular synths and computers now, but it's so much more um, similar to what I was doing when it was just, when I was just by myself with my crude effects pedals and stuff as, as a kid. So in furthering that, I wanted to understand modular synthesis and generative music in a way that it seemed very alien to me. And um, I didn't have a good handle on how I would use it. And I knew I wanted to incorporate those kinds of ideas into telekinesis. And I wasn't totally sure how or what. But um, so in having that idea in 2013, I knew I couldn't write it yet because I wanted to get better at working with, um, yeah, these devices and just philosophically being able to like move inside of that way of thinking more easily. So I did the Hive record before them, which is a beautiful yes. one two modular synths and uh, three percussionists. And um, through that project, 
and also like subsequently like a couple other like solo electronic pieces I was doing, I feel like I started to finally kind of internalize um, what I learned from generative music and, and those kind of process and procedures mm. and would then be able to like more easily uh, translate some of those ideas that I was uh, dealing with technically into a space of more notation and performance. Like I finally kind of inhabited it in a way. Yeah, yeah. And it took a while to get there. You know? Yeah, I can. Um, I, yeah, I definitely hear how Hive was yeah. a, a study for this. And that's and mm -hmm. I, I don't know anything uh, technically yeah. about how modular synthesis yeah. works, you know, but yeah. even but just the, just how the how that music, how Hive uh, kind of how it unfolds. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it, like like the. The mm -hmm. material, yeah, the the material and the form, the content yeah. and the form of Hive. Yeah, uh, I I can hear how that that can be like a yeah like seen as a study for for telekinesis. I um, yeah. to, <clears throat> to, I'm interested though. T tell me more about how um, yeah, like more like more specifically how 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 um how telekinesis is like um, how that brings you back to your early like 14 mm -hmm. year old because it's like that you weren't working with modular synthesis you were working with loops i i right. always noticed one of the things but when you started um or not when you started but when i the stuff from the early 2000s yeah. when i when i met you um it was like there were a lot of people doing stuff with loop pedals and mm. you were always the you were like it already just so far outside of it like you, you know what i mean like yeah. you were like That's technically right. using yeah. this this th looping thing but it yeah. was like you could tell you were already like I'm kind of like it, like just already outside of any traps, yeah. any uh, conventions, like finding these ways to take it out of that. Um, it's, but it's like, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like in college, I kind of um, in in like the mid '90s, early like yeah, let me like '96, '97. I started um, realizing that these effects were able to be like you know you didn't just have to work with them inside of like a you know a band context turn on your your distortion pedal and you know and like have to play with a group of people um and i started to realize too that those pedals and like those this kind of like crude electronic devices were instruments in and of themselves they weren't just coloring for your for a guitar you know it wasn't just like uh some like it, some something to accessorize a guitar like they themselves were their own world were their own little instruments that you had to um master and when i realized that and realized how maximal and minimal it could be and how um uh, the different ranges of the ways that you could uh, use these effects i started kind of thinking about it in in different ways um so, it, so it, it, with the goal being eventually to find ways to not use effects and effects processing and kind of feedback loop uh, systems to not use it superficially where it's just like, oh, I'm turning a flanger on now. Yeah. We're just kind of like, yeah, okay, I get it. But it was like, you know, what does it mean to like really integrate a lot of these effects in, in a way that feels um, expressive and where you really feel like you you're you understand the boundaries and the nuance of them so yeah. it, it, in a lot of ways like as crude as a lot of those devices are it's very similar to, to the modular stuff i mean you know the modular stuff is the mechanism is different there's like added level of depth and sophistication so to speak but it's more just just different processes um but the in a lot of ways there's so much overlap with with how they with how they work together and yeah. um and yeah, it's funny. It, it is funny to like kind of go back to this part of yourself that, um, you know, was so kind of primal and initial and excited when you're like working with these like crude tools and to still feel like that, you know? Mm -hmm. at, yeah, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. Your, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about repetition mm. uh, or not repetition, the sort of the mm. role because you know i mean what does a loop pedal do it repeats things and right. then so you were like already just on some like okay this isn't just repeating but right. there was but there definitely was like sure. that early stuff this relationship to dance music sure. which is obviously still there in a way but it was like you did have like slamming like beats you were doing beatboxing yeah. which is totally uh you know that that's that was a big part of your your uh yeah, original yeah. vibe and i and i um and uh, but now I wonder, 
I'm interested, okay, I'm interested in what the deal is with modular synths and repetition, uh, imperfect repetition or perfect repetition or just total change. Right. And I'm kind of interested in how that fits into, oh, I mean, this is like just the biggest questions because I'm right. interested in how that fits into what you're doing with telekinesis. Yeah. Because telekinesis is like, it's repetitive. I mean, it's a, there's a use of repetition, but mm -hmm. like, you don't think of the word rep repetition when you hear it. You don't think minimalism. You don't think trance. Right. You, I, you, you know, repetition. There's right. I, I, I'm, I'm appreciating the idea that you're saying too is that there's so many different variations as far as what repetition is. Um, there's different ways to feel like something's repeating, even if it's not just like, you know, a a a a a over and over again. There's ways to just like the ear will pick up, um, you know sound that keeps coming back and think of it as repetition even though it's not necessarily in you know perfect sequence back to back um i will say like repetition just as as a form of emphasis of an idea and also just like getting lost in the, like when you hear something once you don't understand the definition of it when you hear it twice it gets clearer and then by the end you're kind of like you're able to understand the contours of like something that in, in my case that I really enjoy something that sounds kind of imperfect and then hearing this imperfection over and over again, where it ends up being perfect or whatever, however you want to describe it. Um, but for me, repetition is just the, the idea of like, is a tool to place emphasis. And it's also, it's also a place to create foundation to kind of build off of and jump off of and, 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 and um, potentially build to kind of, something something could stay the same and change at the same time you know what i mean which is yep, kind yep, of yep. that's kind of interesting what was that who was is that eno said repetition is a form of change yeah yeah was yeah, that yeah. Glass? was that him yeah 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 and i and i agree with that and the the cognitive dissonance of hearing something over and over again and not and hearing it differently every single time depending on what you what it's in relationship with if it's in relationship with anything else is exciting but the thing with telekinesis i could say just as a mechanism that I was that I, I was using a lot because I, I, I think about this a lot the idea of stasis and the idea of forward motion and development yeah and and like how like for me I like a lot of music a lot of uh, electronic music too that I listen to a lot is very demonstrative it's very like permutations of one idea over and over again you know which is super satisfying in its own way that's it's that that's like a way to do it that's exciting at the same time, I hearing that that method that I love, I also feel this tug of war with wanting to feel like we're going somewhere. Like there's like I guess there's the like the romantic in me wants to feel like there's a story or there, not a story, but like there's you know there's a no, I know what you mean. Yeah, development, develop uh, developmental, directional, flowing, uh, variation. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things yeah. changing in a gradual way that goes from point A to point B, right? Yes, but like both ideas of working there's things that i read in between both ways of working that um turn me off in some ways when something's too demonstrative and too uh, uh repetitive sometimes i feel like um you know it, we're, we're we're in too much of a place of stasis and um the concept of development sometimes is just overwrought in, in a lot of ways too that i kind of like sometimes feel like is there's too much it's too goal oriented and like, I want yes. to feel like a sense of space. Yes. So that's the question. It's like, well, what's the solution in, 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 uh, in the way that I was thinking as far as having a sense of stasis and also having a sense of forward motion at the same time. And the way that, uh, explicitly one way that I was doing it in telekinesis that I felt was working well for me, that was, that was keeping me engaged was the idea of these kind of imperfect orbits like imperfect kind of like yes. mobi mobile forms of I was going to say literally that sorry yeah keep yeah, yeah 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 so you have these kind of like um very easy to to I don't want to say easy to understand but like the ear picks it up as something that is definable you you hear like you know this the string entrance in telekinesis the staircase chords and then you kind of hear variations and permutations of that um, it's imperfect in when and how they're executed, but you're able to understand that as a character. 
Yes, you know, yes, yeah. And they you know, also the, these little elements they don't change in ways that go somewhere. I mean, the right, piece right, overall right. goes somewhere, but it's right. not like it changes and then it expands and then it expands more. It's 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 more about the imperfection, the change as an imperfection. Change is an imperfection, but you do hear the variation because there. I, I feel like there are different permutations with each uh, little character, right? You have like the, just as an example, again, in the beginning, the woodwind, the, the flutes doing a kind of staircase entrance, doing these yeah. kind of like metric modulations. The metric modulations are never the same. Right. The, 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 the actual um, phrase harmonically never uh, is repeated. It never comes out the same way. So, but you're able to pick it up you know, you know, sonically, you're able to hear it and say, okay, I understand what that. Right, character. right, right. It's not like there's a main one. It's not right. like there's a main original version of it that right. then changes. It's it's all like a generally a thing. It's generally it's all, that, gener it's all that, generally that a thing. And hopefully it's legible enough where you're able to understand that. And then honestly, like it's just uh, uh, it, it, when I say orbits, you just have like, for instance, the woodwinds in, in that uh, or the, the flutes and then the strings is just this imperfect orbit there's no rhyme or reason other than me kind of like just tooling out how i want it to to play out um it's just like this constant shifting relationship between those two things yeah 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 totally that's when you said mobile mm -hmm. and, and this is i know exactly what you're talking about because i was literally gonna use that same word i don't know for for listeners and stuff i mean how much are how much are you into earl brown like is that is he at all an inspiration for for that or is it i mean it's something you one could arrive at in a multiple different ways. i gotta say i I'm, I'm not as familiar with uh with 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 his work. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he's, he's never been like an aesthetic uh, touchstone for me in any way, but, but he uh, checking him out, um, yeah. Lucier putting, putting me onto him. That, mm. That's how I heard of that vibe of like having, you know, uh, you know, several different players are playing yeah. like they each have their own little elements that they're playing and they're not deliberately yeah. synchronized how they're going to line up. But yeah. they just keep happening in semi-repetitive ways, and the different elements kind of bump up against each other, right? Yeah. Like the, conf yeah, the yeah. configuration. And, and I, I, I think what's cool, what I could definitely, you know, hear that vibe, the mobile vibe, right? Yeah. Where it's like as, as the, as the, um, right, defined elements, and then as the wind blows or as it turns, you see them configured. They, they, they combine in different ways. The, the, the thing that's sick about that and that like I think any composer who's doing this and especially what you're what you do here is that the what those elements are, mm. they have to be a certain the, the quality of what they are has to be such that they will work together. Right. Right. No matter right, how right. no matter how they line up and they won't right. compromise each other or get muddy or get, you know, it's like it's always whatever configuration it's going to work together and be and sound. There good. has to be some kind of like, yeah, relationship as a whole where they're, you know, yeah, they're, they're the main the, the main kind of elements of the character of these of these phrases will will have the relationship is interesting in some way enough where or they leave room for each other in a way where they feel you do feel like there is this kind of like strange fluid relationship that keeps changing yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing with with that as well is that um it allowed me to create a lot of space too it allowed me to create negative space or allowed me to create pockets where i could introduce different elements different characters and have them all kind of start to kind of fold into this like larger um kind of galactic you know relationship together um so you know it, it and it's in in my mind it was still legible in some way, you know what I mean? And then I, you know, and then I break that and then, you know, uh, suddenly you'll hear like just a period of like, uh, you know, long spatial drones or something with something kind of floating on top. So it's not like, um, it's not mechanical in the way that it's being used in the piece. I don't think, right, um, right. it's not like, uh, it's not a device that feels heavy handed in a way that, um, that I, supplant with uh not using my intuition in some way i'm not you my I, i'm myself i'm governing what's happening as opposed to like 
setting up a system that is playing itself out in in some way you know what i mean right right you totally know? well it's it's fully notated yeah. i i I'm, right. I'm, I'm sure yeah. you obsessed over everything for like yeah. years yeah, so yeah, yeah. so but but it has the fluidity of as though maybe those elements were kind of coming in and out in a yes. you know yeah. somewhat improvised like i mean like like you were saying as though the players or this sub as though you had subgroups of players that were yeah. coming in and out as they please it has yeah. that that fl fluidity to it, you know. To yeah, that, yeah, 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 man. Like, I, and you know, I'm in a lot of ways, um, you know, I, I'm I was appreciating the idea that I was kind of messing around with in kind of more generative music, where you're able to kind of paint with more of a in more broad strokes. You're able to kind of have like a a, dis, a, a one step removed from what you're playing because you're not you're not you know i'm not on sibelius going like or finale or whatever the notation program is going like eighth note by eighth note by eighth note or something like that where it just feels like this kind of tedious process um i'm doing something where i'm able to kind of like take a step back and see where these things kind of um come together in a way that hopefully feels organic and i not i'm sorry i, I know i'm kind of getting a little tongue-tied another another thing that i was running into in my own notation in my own music um when i was like writing for different ensembles was this tedium was this like you know from left to right on the score like right right really getting caught up in that and like i really wanted to find a way to like um keep these ideas fresh and and work in a way that um yeah where i was maybe more engaged with the material and you know finding a way where i could keep my intuition a part of it as opposed to um getting lost in the mechanics, but then also not getting uh, so tedious with the notation that it just ends up sounding like that. You know, yeah, sounds, yeah. No, no, totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, you use the word heavy handed, like not being heavy handed. It's funny because oh. like I, I use that same, uh, the idea of a light touch. Mm. I've sort of I've sort of said that about your your music that even when stuff is sort of like he heavier in yeah. sound or darker or, or mm. edgier, you have a sort of a light uh way of like another thing i keep going back to the new york school today but like yeah. felt feldman uh yeah. said something about how he doesn't like to quote unquote push the sounds around yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah, right and, yeah. and and of course you know and he's kind of just like stockhausen pushes the yeah. sounds around i don't right. you know but um right. of, of course there's a spectrum <clears throat> of pushing the sounds around yeah, because you're not like doing indeterminate music. I mean, you're playing right. them around in the sense of planning everything out and notating. But like, but yeah, the way you move them, yeah, this is the thing. Like form wise, mm. the way this stuff unfolds over time, th there's a lot of classical or you know twentieth century composition mm. where where the where it's formally awesome there's a lot of composers like lock and mon and people that i mm. love where it's it's amazing formally but it is heavy-handed in the sense of mm. not in a bad way but it has that vibe of like like uh like i'm doing this like check now this is happening now yeah, it's yeah, static yeah, yeah. now it's developmental and then it ends and it's just like what like you know like it, it has that it has that like mic drop that mic yeah, drop yeah. vibe at the end you know what i mean like right. there's just like a pause and then there's one little clicking sound and it's like right. oh yeah oh yeah i just did that whereas like your, your your stuff has this more um yeah i mean it's sort of like uh but but then you know like once the once the movement's over it's like oh shit that was like yeah. yeah that unfolded in a way that made sense it was balanced you know yeah. the the but um but yeah there's 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 just a lighter uh way of you know it, it's nice of you to say it you know the goal is to is to find a way to keep that fluid keep that um keep it feel like it's not tedious um i certainly will not say that uh whether or not i've succeeded in it or not it's just more just like that's the i've tried to set up situations where i'm feeling like there's a flow um, telekinesis is an intense piece for sure. There's like a real intensity to it where, you know, um, you know, in listening to it, some, you, you know, you have to kind of be in a headspace for it that it, I don't want to say that I, I don't want to equate tedium with intensity, but, um, it definitely, yeah, I don't know. I hope, hopefully I set the thing up well enough where there, the, the flow of the piece can be read. Um, and I, 
hope I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, you, you did. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I gotta say, you know, I, 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 um, I, we, I've been doing some comparison of like this new, you know, this brand new piece to your yeah. way earlier stuff. Yeah. But I mean, there's Central Market, man, which yeah. was like this huge, huge thing for you. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling me about it, like when it was first starting to happen, and um, yeah. and you know, you had me play guitar on some of those live, yeah, uh, those those live concerts that were that were a blast yeah. to do, man. Yeah, and um, sure. but I uh, I re- like um, we talked about this uh, uh, uh yeah. w- when we were emailing, uh, it, it really is it's funny how how I remember when when it was when you were first gonna show show me the stuff you were like yeah man like you might be surprised it was like disclaimer you were like this is a lot more whimsical and like fun and and happy you know you you were like I didn't mean it to be you know but you're like you know you're like this is kind of kind of uh, playful and then with this it was literally the opposite yeah yeah D- disclaimer <laughs> you were like you were like yo this is harsh man yeah. I'm, I'm going harsh and it's like you know knowing knowing your music for 20 years i'm like yeah. i i hear how this is the same artist and yeah, any, yeah, yeah, anyone yeah. who really digs in could could feel it yeah but um but uh That's i funny. mean yeah i don't know did you intend like was that like like did you set out like central market were, no. like but did either of these pieces turn out differently than you planned or like did you have like were you just like i'm going dark on this one yeah. or like for central <laughs> for central market were you just like dude i don't you know i want to be more whimsical like the funny thing central market kind of came out of a time when i was um like the voice that i was writing in not that it's something that i like was just like wearing or something, but just like the, the things that I was interested in um, and the way I was writing, particularly like how I was writing in battles uh, at the time where it was this kind of like very intense kind of manic, um, more absurd. There was like a, an intense intensity, but it was more absurdity um, and just kind of playing with that. Um, and, you know, you know, we were writing a bunch of music and then I really wanted to kind of like take some of that, take that voice and kind of just go like full out in a kind of a different capacity. And just, you know, as opposed to it being a collaboration with a band, it would just be this kind of voice kind of unrestrained. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I didn't, you know, so, and at the time I was really excited about the idea of, and I, and I still love these artists, but like Inyo Morricone and uh, Stravinsky and stuff like that. And, just imagining like, you know, not just those composers themselves, but also just imagining them through the lens of like, um, kind of weird, like electroacoustic production and stuff, uh, at the time that was, you know, I have with all my guitar pedals and all my, uh, ways of working within the band. What, what do those artists mean through that lens? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so looking at it in that way, and then the result was surprising. Um, because I was kind of counting on the idea of the absurdity to really, um, re- I mean, I don't know, to, to read in a way where it, where the project had like a lot of dimension, um, I, I was hoping. And it ended up, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of the record and I, I do think that the peak works in some ways, but. Oh, it's great. Uh, and, and yeah. there's dark, and there's darkness in it too. I mean, especially, you know, there's, there's a. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, disintegrate or no? Uh, dead broken string. Str- yeah, yeah, dead, yeah, dead strings, yeah, yeah. especially you know that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a dynamic piece. I didn't realize how the absurdity would read in some ways, um, and it read differently than I thought. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just any project like you. I, I I can tell you this. I don't think I've ever done a project where I'm like I know exactly what I'm doing, and by the yes. end pretty sure this is what it's going to read and like yes. I'm good like that's what it is there th- that there's no project that's worth it to, to do that like if you're investing all that time of kind of digging deep and exploring you don't know what's going to be on the other side yeah so, yeah yeah um, oh, totally so that piece read in that way and it was funny and then with telekinesis um there was this I was kind of really interested in the idea of uh, creating a sense of space, kind of like we were talking about before, stasis versus development, creating a sense of space and environment. Um, and that, um, and, you know, there's in the vibe of the piece, and, you know, in uh, there's, a, there's <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied with where I want to go with it. Um, but I'll just say, like, there is something uh, neutral 
I could say like um, stylist or vibe wise with the piece that ended up reading more dark than, yeah. than, I, had, than I had realized. Yeah, I, I was I, saying elemental that I elemental. was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sounds like nature, you know, like the elements don't they don't sound like people to me. Right. They, they, <laughs> they, they sound like yeah. uh, plants, rocks, yeah. maybe animals. But even that's a little, <laughs> just, you know. It's funny, when I think of a sense of space, actually, you know, I'm saying, oh, create a sense of space and environment. My, the given definition of that for me is like the wilderness or like is nature, you know what I mean? Um, even if yeah. I don't explicitly say that. Um, so I would, I mean, you know, the it's ecosystems, the idea of kind of creating like these kind of sonic ecosystems that feel totally. realized in a way that, you um, are convincing enough where they feel realized is something that I was really excited about. And that's something different that, than uh, something like Central Market, which was more linear. It was more of a orchestra piece or electroacoustic piece. Yeah. Whereas uh, telekinesis maybe um, seesaws between it being a kind of electronic production that uh, replicates or, or creates a sense of space and ecosystem mm -hmm. and a forward moving piece at the same time. Yeah. 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 Totally. It's, it's definitely like the, the way it unfolds, mm. it's like, it's like there's, there's, there's totally forward movement in the sense of like, just like good form, you know, just like yeah. things, but, but, um, but it, but it, there's a, there's a way that there, uh, there's a way that the, the, um, the rep, the repetitive elements, and even some of the elements themselves are like you know, like that, 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 that. You know, these like little sixteenth note things. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Those those things that technically they have meter, but 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 but. Right. But it's it's not propulsive. Like there, right, there, right, there's right, right. not a feeling. I mean, we keep say, I keep saying unfolding. Right. That sort of implies that these materials are kind of naturally like going someplace, but like um, but a lot of the ways that you'll have stuff bumping up against each other. And then it'll stop happening in a way where like, you know, like just one element will keep, uh, mm -hmm. will kind of keep hanging over and then there'll be a silence mm -hmm. where, you know, like it doesn't yeah, feel yeah. like, it doesn't feel like pushing things forward, but it also doesn't feel like, boom, we're done. Like right, um, right, 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 right. there's uh it's like a sense of kind of like fragmentation. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Or like think things kind of crumble, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, and, um, I mean, it's just, that's like so different than central market. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it really, this yeah. is the thing, you know, the, it's not just like, okay, sound. It's not just like, okay, form, let's, an, let's like analyze like how things are unfolding. It's yeah. like type of attention. I'm, I'm always mm. thinking about this now, like what different types of music, mm. what kind of, what type of attention do they uh, demand or ask yeah. Of, yeah. of the audience? And, and it's like, you know, of course we don't like genre boxes, blah, blah. Right. And anyway, none of us are in a genre where we're all transcending yeah. every minute, right. but, but, but this is, this is right. new music in the yeah. sense of like the type of attention that this mm. requires is the same type of attention that right. Ligeti or, uh, Stravinsky or Stockhausen asks yeah. aside from any, uh, sonic similarities. It's right. the, you, you know, it's yeah. It, I mean, it, it is, it, it is funny like to, um, realize that you can you, the way to engage with different music is is a different listening uh approach you know what i mean you can't you can't listen to all music the same way you know what i mean some music like you know you got your workout playlist and you got like a bunch of beats going and like you're kind of you could use music as kind of a utility in some way to like to you know get something done or just have something in the background that kind of keeps you like buzzing but then there's uh, another way of engaging with art and music that um, it commands attention in order for it to be able to be decoded in some way. Um, and, and, and pieces like this, I, I feel like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the experience for someone would be listening to something like telekinesis, like kind of in the background, just kind of like humming, humming along it, it, because it is so jagged and it is so yeah. fragmented and it is kind of harsh that, I don't know what that experience would be. It would it seems like it would be kind of conflicting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, because well, then it was sort of just comes off as like it would be like, oh, it's like horror movie, right? Stuff, right. But there right. isn't really a movie going. I mean, right. I it's I, I feel like I, I don't know. There's like there's music, there's music that 
to me the the new music vibe or whatever yeah. that is is to yeah. me it's like where you're experiencing time mm, in a yeah. way where it's like that's a major part of it you know whereas yeah. like with rock music and a lot of stuff that i do especially the rock and you know yeah. it's like you're just you're hearing the parts but it, it's not mm. like uh you're not like sitting there for a block of time and what happened to your experience of time in that right, block right, of time. Right. you know there's a chorus coming up blah blah blah. and then even right. something like central market which was not at all verse chorus verse chorus and there is developmental right. stuff uh it's still i think because of the narrative vibe it, sure. it, it isn't like what is stasis and change how is right. that affecting my experience of just sitting here for like 40 minutes you know i think that's true i think that's true yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, you know, we, you, you, you talk about, uh, you spoke about Feldman earlier. He was someone who I really like, uh, he, he kind of like uh, growing, I thought I knew what, who Feldman was like in my twenties, I kind of thought I understood him, you know, Coptic light, uh, durational pieces, uh, quadruple P quiet, you know, <laughs> yep. I'm like, okay, I, I think, I, I think I get it. But, um, and then I was introduced to, um, his pieces that he did in the seventies, these kind of like almost concerto and orchestra, uh, series of pieces like piano and orchestra, flute and orchestra, yeah. uh, yeah. violin and ultimately yeah. violin and orchestra, which ended up being his largest piece, uh, for, uh, that he ever wrote, even it's bigger than Coptic light, the actual uh, size of the piece. And, um, how he composed like that piece it just blew my mind i was listening to that for like years every single day for like two years and it, it figured heavily into my like reapproaching uh the, my understanding of time and development and pace in in uh especially in a large orchestra piece you know there's so much you have this kind of like for some reason weird pressure when you have like this many voices uh at your disposal to be running through all of them and to cre create these dense tapestries after all you have a hundred people there you better be using them at all times you know right 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 but, but what does it mean to actually like parse that out and like um have these kind of like uh kind of pockets of negative space and empty time and um you know this kind of like event based composition that erupts from nothing and then goes to yeah. nothing yeah you know events I mean? event based yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was someone that really like blew my mind thinking about uh, uh, composition in that way. Um, you know, a lot of the spectralist co uh, composers that we were talking about uh, over email too, like um, Gerard Grise and Tristan Morale, and um, I mean even the uh, more modern composers like uh, uh, Kaya Katya Kaya Sarajo, who I really oh, yeah um, yeah just like the, the idea of like. Um, Manipulating time and incorporating ideas of electronic music and, and um, electronic uh, practice and generative music into the orchestra and yeah. how that changes the nature of the experience and aesthetically, what are you draw drawing in besides just like trying to emulate oscillators? Like, what is that? What are you thinking about formally? when you uh, start taking some of these ideas from electronic music into that space. Yeah. 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 That's the thing is that, yeah, I've, I've taken a bunch from Grise as far as just using micro tonality to get mm -hmm. these, these f fused, uh, not, not, uh, you know, not tonal harmony, but more, you know, pure sound type things. Yeah. But, but I've never really, you know, really gotten into how that, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. how his use of form, you know, when he's looking at a single sound and like analyzing how he's going to base orchestra, you know, he's also got this attack decay. Right. Uh, you know, he's using that. It's funny. Yeah. Cause we're actually, yeah. Well, the way the piece, be the way telekinesis begins, my yeah. first thought was like, totally it's like a grise element but then <laughs> yeah. actually within like 20 seconds it's like okay actually you know that's, that's <laughs> it's, it's like it's like not like following through on that like right, in, some, right. in some in some overly you know in the in the zone right. Right? but just all these all these you know i heard a lot of messian and a lot of ligety um and stravinsky and stuff that's um cool. yeah man i mean yo i'm interested in i'm interested also on on aside from uh technical musical shit yeah. uh just the um like the concept behind it, uh, like th thematically, like can say just like because you know, we're saying there isn't like a narrative, you know, the yeah. music doesn't unfold as a narrative, like right? Point, point A to point B, 
Right. Uh, it, it doesn't have that sensibility formally, but but it, but there is a concept to this. This isn't just like four right. blocks of, of purely instrumental music. The, the, the uh, I mean, it's based on a, a Kira, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to my initial idea uh, early on, I was like, I was like, oh man, that'd be really cool to do like an opera on a cura. What 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 would that be like? I'd be it's it's kind of just an exciting uh, concept. But I'll admit, as I was kind of diving deeper into it, um, well, for one, like f- um, just the nature of the piece, I was feeling like it was existing more successfully in an abstract space, um, and having and having it be the vehicle for something more literal, I thought would kind of demystify it in some way i don't know that, that's, totally. that's, how, that's how i was feeling um i also felt like i i i, I think akira in an opera format would be really amazing um i i started to kind of realize also that might not be my story to tell either like i really i was really uh, i'm a fan of the story and I'm, I'm a big horror sci-fi guy um but i started to realize like yeah that, that there might be someone else that might be able to take that and uh to a place that felt might feel more right for them but you don't and want to uh culturally appropriate from psychics <laughs> gonna get the psychic community is gonna cancel, cancel you community. in your fucking dreams <laughs> oh, that's really funny. but then also and then honestly it was it was an interesting concept but then you know to, to kind of then face uh what it would mean to actually do an opera and like opera writing and and confronting that for me i started to feel like you know what this is not really what i want to do right now and like that this is you know and maybe in a different time or something it would it'll, i'll try it but suddenly like the whole thing i was like nah this is this doesn't feel right yeah. and it's funny i was i think the thing that i was most excited about thinking about akira or like carrie or like scanners or these like kind of like telekinesis uh based kind of like horror uh stories um i think the, th- the thing that i wanted to synthesize that always kind of um moves me in a lot of ways in 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 a lot of art and music is just the idea of awe the idea yes. of like huge shapes moving in this way that feel like impossible and and beautiful and scary all at the same time yes um you know i again this this was just like the model that i was kind of thinking about i'm not saying that it that it's captured but it does like you you know it's funny i I also i looked this up the other day because people talk about emotion in music and you know telekinesis is an intense piece and i also think of it as an emotional piece in some ways even though it is elemental um it kind of you know, in the same way that it's stasis and forward developing, I do feel like it's elemental and neutral and also emotional at the same time. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, awe, I mean, awe yeah. is yeah. an emotion. When people think about emotions, they, they, that's not the first one they think, right. of, but that no. is that, that is a feeling, you know, and, and, you know, and, you know it's and, funny. Yeah. I, I actually looked at it because there's, there was a moment where I was actually wondering and, and like conflicted. I was like, is awe an emotion? Is it, or is awe just a right. verb, or is it, is it, or is, or, or I mean, is it just a descriptor? Right. Uh, and you can be odd of something. I was like, but d- is it actually defined as an emotion? And and it, and it is. Right. But there was a moment where I was like, uh, you because you don't think of awe as an emotion. <laughs> yeah. Weird... Well, well, I I think I think two things. I think one one is that um, yeah, when we think of emotions, it's sort of like. It, it 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 kind of implies that you're important like it implies right. that you're that, not not in a bad but you know if like you if you're an emotion of love you're like oh like love between people that matters whereas like right. awe awe is kind of like you feel small like you're being right. humbled uh before maybe elemental forces or something yes. i mean yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. maybe god i say god but yeah, yeah um sure. but like um my um yeah, uh, Bradley Coy, who's an amazing composer, he goes by uh, Silk Defect. Um, he was on. Um, it, it's a great name, right? Great name. Yeah, yeah. He's um, he was on the live stream, and he 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 was saying how the definition of the sacred to him is feeling small. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Small. Oh, that's that that's that's really interesting. That's really beautiful. I, yeah, I mean that. I, the I mean the 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 joy of playing in a sandbox of elements that are just like hovering and massive around you is really exciting, you know. And that's that that's how I wanted to feel maybe in this piece and what I wanted to to, to try to illustrate some 
feeling of. Um, and yeah, so, but, but the idea of being explicit with the narrative in some way, I ended up pulling back from, I, I did kind of think of it, um, formally, uh, in some way, there's like a kind of loose connections that I would kind of draw from, but for the most part, um, yeah, telekinesis is, 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 is an abstract piece that is kind of like, um, illuminating some strange, uh, narrative, uh, but is kind of more focused on phenomenon, like uh, yeah. the phenomena of the orbits of these, um, massive shapes. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, like it's, um, it's like the, you know, Akira, I mean, it's sort of, it's almost an archetype, the, uh, kid with special powers right, right, uh, right. Ar archetype, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so even though you, you kind of pulled away from being, uh, you know, heavy handed with the narrative, yeah. you, it is a youth chorus. So yeah, I mean, there yeah, is yeah. this vibe of like kids. Yeah. It has that luminous radiating, like when I hear it, well, I wouldn't have probably wouldn't have thought of this exactly if I, if it weren't called telekinesis, but hearing yeah. it and thinking of telekinesis, I do think of like the glowing mind you know this like brain with like glowing you know right, right, um, right. like like in the sound of the the sort of luminousness of the, of the orchestration and stuff yeah. um i don't know maybe it's sort of like uh i mean also you don't have text i mean the the the, right. the kids are just singing uh syllables uh, vowels uh, um and they're not front and center that's the thing right. i mean usually like a quiet well not usually but it's right. very much an experimental music kind of you know thing yeah. to have you know the voice be just right. laying in the cut i mean right, right, orchestrationally right, right. so i mean i don't know maybe that's like the kid in awe of his own elemental powers right. or something you know like feeling small against uh his own well the funny uh, thing too is like this, the story of a cure too is so is ends up being tragic or at least uh, of the at least uh the kid that had that thing had the ability to uh you know uh, who had the telekinetic ability ended up just he ended up uh, killing himself because it just it got out of control and it kind of like uh, took him over and it wasn't something that um, was meant to be controlled by uh, by a kid or <laughs> by by anybody. So just like thinking about it like that, like there's no uh, that that the idea of something of being powerful like that, uh, no one can really truly inhabit is something that's kind of Mm. interesting to think about um but i i i have to yeah i have to um i should go i should that's one thing i should have done is go back and kind of thought about where those connection points were because by the end i, I really did start to disengage from uh, uh a real narrative and just uh was really just focusing on the um yeah, just the phenomenon of of what it would mean to have a something like that, uh, having an ability like that, and trying to il illustrate uh, sonically that those kinds of uh, that kind of the, not only the, the the you know someone having the thing, but just watching someone have that ability. right, 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 right. I think that would be really in amazing. <laughs> to, I, to see. Something I thought of this morning, yeah, and. I mean, it's a little, I, I don't, I don't know how personal this is to you. I don't yeah. need to go too like Mark Maron, like getting in your fucking yeah. like personal <laughs> shit, but yeah. like, um, but yeah. you, um, I was wondering if on some level there's some yeah. thematic connection between the, the, uh, the theme of telekinesis with some of the thematic stuff from your first, from history that has no effect. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, is, is there any, I mean, is that sort of, do you not talk about the, like, do you, uh, about the sort of the, the vibe with the first record or like, um, let me think about, I mean, similarly with, with the, with the vocal loops and like the, like very distorted and kind of destructed kind of lands, the sonic landscape of, of history that has no effect stuff. There was a lot of, um, uh kind of experiments in the idea of like force um okay. sound force and um that in that kind of way there was a lot i mean there's a lot of angst in that record too i have to say word, as, word, um, yeah I'm, was, I'm thinking of like power of the mind though yeah you know oh, like yeah, sort I mean, of like like psychic phenomena you yeah, know because yeah, yeah. you had the thing going on with memory and history and like the yeah, mind, like that's that's that, that's that's what i'm talking about i'm talking yeah. about the sort of the um 
That's interesting. I mean, I, I can say like the theme, I was very conscious of the idea of the, sh of the theme shifting from this like a uh, telekinetic theme to creatively what it means to psychically um, produce a massive project just from, just from a creative standpoint and uh, holding the flame of like a, of a large project yourself and psychically just like, um, you know, having the ability to kind of maintain this thing that, uh, you know, only you're going to understand and, until it's realized, until people could actually hear it. And um, just maybe generally speaking, like the psychic uh, uh, strength needed to complete large projects as creative people out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it can be a lot to, to feel like you're holding... Okay, this is a level of this is a level of arrogance that you don't yeah. probably like to indulge in, but I'll speak for myself yeah. and I'll drag yeah. you into it. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. you feel the powers that you have to right. make this work. Right. And it's just it's like a caramel, it's overwhelming. <laughs> You're just like, I hope I don't level right. cities <laughs> with this with this counterpoint. I hope. Nobody dies. Right. I, I hope I don't die. That's yeah, exactly. More, that's, that's more that's... what I was like, just like, um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It just it, it, first of all, it takes me a long time to finish things. It takes me a long time to do things. And, um, I, uh, my creative process, uh, sometimes can be smooth, but for the most part, I'm using, um, making music and art as a way to like, go deeper about an idea or to understand something more about uh, myself or what I want uh, or like a, a new aspect in music that I want to kind of like integrate or into what I'm doing or new, new aspect of art or philosophy that I want to integrate into what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, that's hard work, man. It's fucking hard. It's, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a worthy exploration every time, but it doesn't come without, um, you know, uh, a massive amount of psychic energy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We being... used to uh, me, me, and uh, and Hilmer used to joke yeah. about how uh, when you're when you run in when you run into one of your buddies from the rock or guitar world, you're like, "What have you been up to?" And they're like, "Yeah, we're making a new record, dude. It's coming yeah. out." And when you talk, when you run into your classical friends, it's always <laughs> they, it, it's it's like, "Oh, what have you been doing?" They're like. I'm working on this piece, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah, yeah. like that. There's this like defeated, like when is this gonna be over? But but I don't know though. But you've always uh, you've never had this tortuous vibe though. Even though I know it's it's draining. Like I, yeah. I it seems like you um, I don't know. Every time you're talking about doing a project, it always yeah. has this vibe. Yeah, like it always has this interested, open vibe. Like the way you talk about stuff, it's always just like, yeah, yeah I'm just like, what about this? Like, you know, it's yeah, like yeah. Uh, you, you always seem like. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I uh, give that feeling. That's that's the energy you put out. Because I mean, you know, awe. Okay, like there's there's awe as in I feel small before like a right. sheer cliff face with like moss on it. And yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There, there's that, but then there's also, like you said, the kid in a sandbox, which maybe right. there's awe, but it, there's also the playfulness. Uh, right. It's right. All, maybe, you know, it's like feeling like a child and playful. Uh, right. That's maybe like the lighter version of awe versus mm. this <laughs> kind of versus like this kind of like, you know, holy shit, look at the ocean, holy shit, I didn't realize I was psychic, or whatever, <laughs> but, but whatever, more crushing, you know, more crushing forms of awe. Uh, that, yeah. that, that is a t-shirt waiting to be printed. Holy <laughs> shit, I didn't realize I was psychic. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I like that definition that you're, that you, that you said of your friend of, like, um, feeling small before something that, uh, it, it just kind of that can humble you um usually uh within art or within being out in the world in nature or something like that. i i, I kind of seek that feeling you know what i mean like that that that's a um exciting place to 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 uh, it's this exciting feeling to feel and to be able to like try to recreate that um is something that i was i i think is a um yeah, it was it was it was something that I was excited to try to do in this 
project. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, I'm like, I've, I'd be interested to talk about, you know, some context stuff about how you feel yeah. like your work and especially this work is fitting into larger uh, trends and larger, yeah. you know, stuff in the, in the world of music and composition. Yeah. We could definitely go deep on that. It's also, we're at an hour. I don't know. How, yeah. are, how are you, how are you feeling? Yeah. What's, uh... I, I probably got to take off in like maybe five minutes, something like that. So, um, right but... on. Yeah, is that is that cool? Like, it, yeah, dude, whatever, yeah. whatever you got to do, yeah. man. Yeah, no, an hour is an hour is a great episode. But I, I am kind of interested. I, you know, like because we were talking about how this how this project has a new, how we were talking about the type of attention that it commands and how I'm calling it the like the new music, contemporary music, right. attention span type shit. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, I mean, do you feel like I, I feel like when when you were doing Central Market, not just sonically and compositionally, but also the way it was being like presented and just mm. sort of the vibe of like Ty Braxton's orchestra piece, like yeah. w like, uh, you know, uh, X battles, you know, I feel right. like it had this vibe of like crossover composer, mm, which right, I, right, I right. wonder if that's changed. I mean, that was never. A negative thing in some right. ways that might have been more exciting to people than than right. uh, just another classical guy but I, I i remember when we did the alice tully hall gig yeah. i remember the classical musicians wore all black and we yeah. wore whatever like yeah. I, I, and I, I i remember that being like okay like we're yeah, seeing yeah. we're seeing right, right, that right. like born out yeah. you know uh, whereas actually aesthetically it was way more fused and the right. actual the actual music is actually quite blend it together sure, but sure. but i mean but just as far as like how you're viewed how you view yourself mm. how this stuff i mean do it, yeah. have you become more less of a crossover guy or how it's how it's marketed like you know what i mean i don't i, I don't know i mean i i don't know how to totally answer that i could say that um again i, I always kind of like end up with a project and i go wow okay so that's what it is you know there's no like um and not to say that this is what you were uh, asking, but there's no kind of like contrived idea of like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to cross over to this. Then right, right. This. Well, other people contrive it. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah, sort yeah. of what I'm asking, you know, right. like, right, right. Oh, you're right. Other people. like and, press and or whatever, you know. Right. And like, I don't know, like I, I, every release I've done, I could say it um, has been received in a, in a unique way to me that I, I, I'm, I kind of puzzle out like, oh, that's OK. I didn't see that happening or I didn't see that coming. Um, you know, I, I haven't been in a more like rock band uh, project since being in battles. Yeah. Um, I, I do work more in kind of electronic music at this point. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I have to say, I honestly don't know. I, I think it's probably because the piece is so um, centered as a orchestra piece even though it's yeah. kind of have it, the production of it is um novel in some ways that's one thing i i, I, I should have talked about it's just um conceiving the from the production end of it is different yeah it's yeah, different but, it's different than most yeah like classical well, like, sounding stuff just like what like what does it mean to write for orchestra now um what does it mean through the lens of of like modern production and studio practice um, yes, yes. and age um, and that was certainly a huge uh, part of why I wanted to do the piece. So, I mean, so even then, like it has this, it's an electroacoustic element uh, uh, aspect of the piece, but it's also, I was mixing and editing it the same way I was doing uh, Hive or in other like electronic pieces. So there are, there is this kind of mixed approach of um, how I, engage with these projects or, or not mixed approach it was more of a singular approach of how i engage with these projects but the results of them are kind of like in different yeah they uh, end up, it ends up differently yeah but I, I i guess i guess you kind of answered my you know yeah. actually like my question was a lot more superficial than yeah. than, than 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 all that but yeah, yeah. like also quote unquote electronic yeah. composer that seems to be the glue i i think but, so. between between the world of classical music and non-classical right i, think, so. I mean i think yeah. that's like a, i think the safest bet is to say that um my my home base maybe is more like coming from an electronic place and yeah. then kind of like being able to like engage in different it's certainly like i could say uh just as far as practicality is concerned you know i have a studio with electronic gear and and i'm i work in that way i have much more access to that than I do an orchestra or like having to call somebody <laughs> yeah. up and do, you know what I mean? So yes, indeed, by, yeah. by, by a default, 
I'm certainly more like kind of engaged in like the uh, uh, electronic realms. Um, and, I, you know, culturally speaking, it's an exciting place to be because I feel like technology and electronics and stuff, that's, if that's a story that's continually being written, there's no, um, there's no kind of, uh, uh, there's the, the book isn't closed on it where there's some kind of dogmatic way of thinking. Um, there's, there's no right way of doing it. People are still trying new things. Whereas within like, you know, classical music, obviously there's, there's, there's more of a boundary between, uh, uh it, it's more understood that there's kind of more of a kind of conservative culture, uh, within classical music that I don't feel, uh, I can relate to and don't necessarily exist in, but, but I love the sounds. I love, yeah. yeah. You know, I love like the I love the sound of the orchestra. I love the sound of these ensembles, and just being able to interface with uh, those sounds and try to find like interesting ways to um, combine it with the world that I'm uh, that feels more forward thinking to me mm -hmm. is something um, that uh, that's where I would want to be as opposed to feeling like oh I'm a classical guy i don't really i can't really relate to that yeah yeah no totally yeah, not yeah. At all. yeah but but i do i mean it is interesting that that you now I maybe mean, didn't men mention that you're now at princeton you're, you're a professor yeah. you're a professor at princeton which is brand new yeah. somewhat unexpected for you you know yeah. right i mean something yeah, yeah. sure always would have been cool to imagine in some way but but you know it sort of came up you know you weren't like uh, for sure lo looking around and so it seemed interesting that it was like not cause and effect on either side, but that right. you did, you know, get this professorship and then yeah. at the same time drop this record that is it's, like it's, more classical quote unquote sure. than, than, than your stuff. It just sort of happens to work out great. It just right? happened to I work mean, it's, yeah. at the same time. It, and it's really crazy. Yeah. I, um, uh, it really was kind of serendipitous the way that whole, uh, like the combination of telekinesis and then Princeton happening at the same time came about. And, um, and yeah, like uh, I could say, Princeton has been really amazing. The The program is a lot different than I thought it, it would be. Like I, I, you know, I have kind of preconceived notions of what it would be. It's this, you know, uh, Princeton with a capital P, it's big school. Yeah. Um, but it ends up feeling like um, a place that uh, is really exciting to work artistically. There's a lot of people doing a lot of different kinds of things, a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, variation uh between what how people are working so it's been it's been great yeah it's man Don, great. donica dennehy he's he's still donica. there right oh yeah that, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah that dude is so sick i yeah I I, yeah yeah um yeah yeah well, that's the thing it's not just that you are at princeton now you are princeton so now the place <laughs> right right you know what i'm saying it's like you're like oh i like what's going on there but now right. you are you are what's going it it, ju <laughs> it it just became different i mean not right. even being not even being dramatic but just yeah you know no, they bring they bring people there they people they these institutions bring people in yeah. to change the institution you know so it's really exciting man it, and um it it Culturally, it feels really healthy there, and it feels like there's um, room for uh, my perspective and different perspectives there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually really uh, really enjoying it. it. You're right; like it wasn't something that I uh, thought uh, would have happened. I wasn't really uh, thinking I would be going the teaching route. Um, if if you asked me a couple of years ago, but um, the way it's played out and and uh, yeah, working here and actually seeing what it feels like and how it actually works. It's, it's been really, really great. It's been yeah. Really great. yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's exciting, man. It's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Well, cool, yeah. man. I'm, uh, I'm hyped that you dude, came thank by. You so much. I hope I, uh, <laughs> hope I wasn't, uh, getting lost in, a. Uh, tongue-tied uh answers but uh, dude dude have you watched any of these other streams dude <laughs> yeah. I, dude just chemtrails i mean it is just <laughs> just straight just <laughs> just straight chemtrails you know oh, it's, but no man I, I appreciate uh uh being able to talk about the record and to talk with you about it charlie uh after all these years and be able to hell yeah, yeah get, in, get into the project it's um you know there's it, this one is it, it, th this one is like a tougher one to unlock. And so I, you know, there's, I, I knew you were a person that I felt like would be able to relate to what I was trying to do here. So it's been, oh, it, yeah. was, it was really <laughs> exciting to be able to talk, talk with you about it. Big time dog. Big time. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, I will see you. You know, I'm moving back to New York in April. 
awesome Kir- kirsten and i so you know i'll get to i'll get to i don't know yeah maybe i'll come okay. out to princeton and check yeah. out you know uh, yeah you, you come out here and i'm an hour away like the the uh, new york is very very close dude wa- close. W- walking through a a uh, northeastern college campus in, <laughs> yeah. in in either the spring or even better in the fall it's yeah. like there's nothing like that man it's, it's <laughs> yeah. so like crisp and like yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, pretty great. So. Yeah, when you when you come up, I'll show you around. Yeah, totally, man. Cool. All right, man. Uh, be well. Thanks. Say what's up to yeah. Grace. And Definitely um, will. Yeah, much love, bro. Much love, man. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. All right. I'll check you later. All right. Yeah, Ty Braxton. The greats. The greats of our time. Uh, this may be the last stream of the year, actually, because, yeah, next I got to take next week off. We've been doing these every week. Um, but, uh, yeah. And oh, and then I'm on tour with Extra Life for, yeah, for all of January. So those of you in France and the UK obviously come out to those Extra Life shows. Tour dates posted all over the place. Um and uh yeah and then it'll start it'll be like a new season right it'll be like the new last things uh season of guests guests big and small and uh yeah we didn't we didn't have any crazy uh didn't have any crazy questions or comments in the uh it was uh in the comment section but um it's all good all right oh yeah brad i'm gonna see you in paris dude obviously guest list 100 percent. no question about that but yeah all right everyone if i don't uh if i don't see you all because it won't be the streams uh merry christmas happy holidays happy hanukkah etc etc and uh there it is peace everyone